Lord God, just thank you for this time, Lord. And may we praise the one and only Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, may you find us faithful. May, Lord God, we find you to be well pleased with us, Lord God. May we bless you and honor you, Lord, through this study today. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right, John chapter 1. Down to verse 15. 14. 14. First John, I mean First John, here I go again. John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Parentheses. And we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, that's what we talked about last week, and truth. Truth. Now when we read about the devil in John 8, 44, we learn that he's not only a liar, he's the father of lies. Amen. What we're going to look at right now is we're going to look at the truth. That's important. The world cannot accept the truth and people don't want the truth. They get angry at the truth. They'll deny the truth. They will have their own truth when you bring them the truth. So, again, let's look at John 8.44, the opposition of truth. And it's sorry that we all tell lies. Occasionally in our lives, we do lie. Some do it more than occasion. And we do stretch a story. That's a lie. When we go beyond what the truth is, when we speak about the truth. In John 8, 44, Jesus speaking, Ye of your father the devil. Well, look out, what would Jesus do? Look at that. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He didn't, he didn't make truth his dwelling. Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So plain and simple, when we tell a lie whatever degree, whatever color it may be, we have taken the characteristics of our own old father if we're saved. We've been adopted by God. We've been adopted by a God who cannot and will not lie to us. But when we go to tell him a lie, we have gone back to our old nature of the devil. And what we learn here is lies come from Satan or the devil. He fathers them. He nurtures them. He nourishes them. He brings forth. So, whether you are a Christian in a pew or a preacher out of a pulpit or you're, you're talking to your boss or you're talking to your family, you talk, whoever you are, saved or lost, a lie comes from the devil. It does not come from God. Now, Christ, John 14, verse 6. That was the devil we just looked at. John 14, verse 6. Again, the very words of Jesus Christ. Jesus says unto him, I, Jesus speaking, not me. When I quote this verse, I, I will try to always say it's Jesus doing it. They started recording. So, with John 8, 44, the devil, we see John 14, verse 6. And like I said, when I try to quote this on the, when I quote, because I quote often, I am the way, I try, this is what Jesus said, I am the way, there's no other way, I'm not talking about that today, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Your only access to God is, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Now he says in that statement there, the truth. What is true? And that's a question in the Bible. That's what Pilate asked Jesus. Speaking to Jesus up, what is true? Uh, you're looking at him. Jesus said, I am the truth. 
So when we tell the truth, we are going on the behalf of God. Jesus Christ. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. So, John 17, 17. Is there a way that we can go all truth all the time? Absolutely. Jesus did. Jesus never lied. 33 and a half years. And he was our example. And if Christ can do it, we can do it. How do we do it? Sanctify, which means set apart. I'm going to live for God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Well, we just read Jesus said, I am the truth. It says the Word is true. In John 1.1 1, 1, we looked at in the beginning was the Word. The Word is Jesus Christ. This Bible we hold in our hands, the King James Bible, is Jesus Christ. It is the truth. Now it has recorded lies. There are lies in this Bible that men have spoken. But the Bible hasn't lied. Amen. And when it records what a man says, it tells the truth of what he said. Every little tittle, every little tattle. So how can we go to always speak in the truth when we always speak about the Word? But we don't speak about the Word all the time. And then we need to be careful because we may misquote the Scriptures, which I probably have done many times in public ministry or dealing with people. And we've got to be careful to say, well, I'm not quoting the Scripture correctly. I may not be uh, purveying this, this, this Scripture, but let me tell you, you know, the best of my knowledge what this scripture is. And Jesus Christ went about speaking and living the word. That's what will get you out from lying. Because the Bible is the truth. The word of God is the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. And to be sanctified is to have the word which is true. Get rid of the other nonsense. Sports and everything like that. Get in the Word and speak about the Word. And always be the Bible as your life and your conduct and your being. Then your chances of lying are very slim. Only by misquoting. So, we're going to look at some verses now here that we're going to look at that God cannot, will not, and is unable to lie. These verses are probably something you're going to want to write down. We're going to look at uh, three, four, five. We're going to look at seven verses. Jesus said, I am the truth. We're going to look at seven verses that God cannot, will not, and is unable to lie. Psalm, uh, no, wait, let's do this in order. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23.19 23, 19 Numbers says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. For he ha for hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? Shall he not make it good? That verse is telling also that what God says He's going to do. Now God's not a man. Now we know that God was man, Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ was no ordinary man. He was a sinless man. He was God manifest in the flesh. All men are sinners. Look what God says about man. God is not a man that He should lie. I don't lie. God says all men lie. you got to be sinless not to lie. And we've all have stretched the story. And some people call it a Baptist story. You know, it's, it, it's a lie, but we do it. But God cannot do it. Right. It says God should not lie. And that God's word is faithful. What he says he will do. He says there's a hell. There's a hell. He says, I'll give you, a, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll give you no more sorrow, no more pain. It's going to happen. Because he won't, he's not going to, we're not going to get the new Jerusalem. Oh, sorry, not here. 
Their religions are waiting for whatever their heaven is, whatever it is. They're going to find out it's a big lie. Because their God can lie to them, not my God. So man is capable of lying, Numbers 23, 19, but God is not capable. And Psalms 89, I'm trying to get this in order. I don't know why I wrote it out of order. Psalms 89, 35. Psalms 89, 35. Amen. I'm, 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 my mind is... Weird. Psalms 89, 35. Huh? 89, 35. No, 89, 35. God speaking, once I have sworn by my holiness, that's God, that I will not lie unto David. That's very important. Because David, for David, God told him, you're never going to not want a man to sit on this throne. He promised David that his seed will be on that throne forever. Problem is, when Coniah was taken to captivity and Babylon sacked and destroyed Jerusalem, there has not been a king on that throne since that period of time. Israel has not had a king. Then we come forth the virgin birth where Jesus Christ is going to take that throne of David and that throne will be occupied by Jesus for all eternity. Now it may look like a lie by God right now. Well, David doesn't want anybody to be on the, David's not going to have anybody to sit on that throne. That's today, Lord. There's no one sitting on that throne. But that title belongs to Jesus. God hasn't lied. He just hasn't put Jesus on that throne yet. Remember, David was anointed king, and he wasn't there for a long, long time to be the king. While King Saul, a type of Antichrist, a type of the devil, was reigning. So here, I'm not going to lie to David. David is one of the foundations of the Jewish people of the government of Israel. Isaiah 65, 16. Again, we're looking at verses where God cannot lie. And these verses, what Jesus said, John 14, 6, is, you know, He is the truth. So, we're looking at verses where God says, I cannot lie, so guess what? God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. Amen. Isaiah 65, 16. That he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. He that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Well, that sounds like what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, God of truth. Now when God makes that statement, God of truth, there, what we're looking at right now these verses, there's no room for God to lie. You know, we are resting our eternal all in all, everything, on what God has said through the Bible. And there are many people who don't believe the Bible. Everything that I'm counting God to do, I am trusting the very fact that what He says is that He's not a liar in it. I expect from God that if He tarries and I die, at that moment I die, I'm going to be present with Him. That's what He said. I am expecting God one day that if he is not to tarry, whatever I'm going to be doing that day or night, that I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if we're going to hear the trump, but there will be a trump. And I am expecting after the dead in Christ has risen to the clouds, I am expecting that I will be caught up. That moment of whoosh, I'm gone. I'm expecting God to do that because he said it. I am putting my trust and my faith in that he has not lied. Christians do that. I am putting my faith in after the great white throne judgment that there's going to be a new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. And in new Jerusalem, I am trusting that he's going to give me a brand new body. I'm going to have no more tears, no more sorrow. That's what he has written in the scriptures. 
Israel will be forever the nation in the apple of God's eye and trusting that. And when you look at religions, there's one really you're going to populate planets. You're going to go off into a burning place and burn off your sins and still there's no really heaven, but there's a heaven, but no heaven. And then another one, you're going to get virgins and then another one, you know, you come back in another life. Well, those are lies. And those are lies that will drag you into hell, believe in those lies. There are people in hell today who have honestly believed in a religion, in something that is not the true, John 8, 44, the devil. The devil lies to the majority of the people and they believe it. The few that go through the straight gate are the ones that believe God at his word. Now, Majority does not rule in that case. It's the minority. And we put all our faith and belief on a book called the Bible. And I will go one more step close and I will say only the King James Bible, where they will say King James onlyism. What's the difference between a modern Bible and a King James Bible? The King James Bible is what God absolutely said. The modern Bible is what man has taken out what God said. You're trusting your whole life on it. You better have the right one. One God, one spirit, one baptism, one church, 26, what, how many Bibles is there now? You've got to have one word that speaks the truth. That has not been adulterated by man. As I said, we were talking about hymns. There are hymns been adulterated by Satan and by man for the honor of Satan and man. They're so close you can't tell them apart unless you study. There's only one book that tells you that says study. That's the King James Bible. Why did God tell you to study? Because I'm telling you the truth. They're not telling you the truth. How do you rebuke a religion? Study the Word of God to find out what the absolute truth is. The devil does not want you in this book. He does not want you to study it. Because all his Bibles say don't study. Because this is the truth. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, 1 Samuel 15. I went out of place. I apologize. 1 Samuel 15, 29. Verse 15, 29. Our all in all, my all in all, is that God's not going to lie to me. Now, I have had in my lifetime of 50 years, lost and saved, I have had times where it comes up to the plate, whatever the situation is, I have been faced with some kind of question where it, if I tell a lie, I'm going to get out of trouble. And I've told a lie. Mm -hmm. I have come up to the plate and I've gotten in trouble where the time I told the truth and I've seen where, you know what, it went beyond and above all measures than telling a lie. I, went to, I got one time right now in my mind, I went to my boss and, you know, he, can, he called me in the office. I didn't know anybody knew. And, man, if I tell the truth, I'm going to be in great trouble. And he, I told the truth. He said, okay, let's get this worked out. Let's get it taken care of. Like, wow, that's not how I expected it. The truth shall set you free. That's what we just read. And, you know what the, and the thing is, when you do tell a lie, you know how to stop lying? That moment you lie to somebody, turn around, go back, say, you know what? I don't know why I did it. I don't know wherever I did it. I just want to tell you I lied to you. You know what? That will put the flesh down. And if you're going to humble your flesh, you're going to make your flesh turn around and apologize and repent of what you just yeah. did. Your flesh is not going to try that again. And you know what? That's going to build character for you. And if you tell the truth, and it's be found you're telling the truth, you're going to build character in the people who you're dealing with. Say, listen, I have been also, I have been many times at my job called or whatever you want to be accused of lying. And I had people in management who did not know who I was tell the people, no, no, not silent. Somebody else, we would believe that story, but not him. 
It builds a character to tell the truth. So when you are called on the mat, listen, that person speaks truth, that person, you know, there's no way. But if you're a liar and you keep lying, you don't have a character. We're going to get a new name in heaven. I would hate to have possibly have a name that God's going to give us that means liar. That's what you were when you were a Christian. You were a liar. We may get a new name based upon our character. I hate to be fraud. I even know used car salesmen that are Christians that defraud their names, their people. Christians. 1 Samuel 15, 29, look at what this one says. And also the strength, capital S, so it's God, of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he's not a man that he should repent. Now there again, there's that sinning man. That's not the man Christ Jesus, because he was a sinless man. God says in these two verses, you're a liar and you need to repent. Now let me tell you something, when we do tell a lie, you go off in the closet and say, Lord God, I am so sorry I told that lie. Okay, that sounds good. You got it right with God. The Bible says, confess thy sins, he's faithful and just and faithful. But now you know what you got to do now with your sin? You got to make it right. You gotta go to the person that you lied to. You gotta go to the person. You gotta make things. You gotta make amends. That's the hard part. But God is not able. He's the strength. He's not going to repent, and He's not going to lie to us. That's that's our faith. Uh, Titus one two. This is a good one. Titus one two. Just before Hebrews. Titus 1 2. Now, you, you want to, you want, if you, I don't know how you are with memory verse, but you want a, a verse of stick in your heart. Titus 1 2. Okay, we're looking at God and Jesus who's not going to lie to us. Christians can lie. They shouldn't, but they do. But God will not. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life. Do you have hope in eternal life? Okay. I do. Which God? Alright. The eternal life that God. That God cannot lie. Promise before the world began. Look at that, cannot lie. There is no reason of doubt. Do you have eternal life? Yes. How do you know you got eternal life? God said it. How do you know what he said? He's going, he cannot lie to me. Well, it's just a book. It's no ordinary book. Not only do I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life, but I put my faith and trust in a King James Bible. Now, I'm not going to say my Bible is God. This is not my study Bible. This is what I take with me. But my study Bible has marks all over it. I can't even read certain places with a mark. You're not going to mark Jesus. I can tear a page out of here accidentally. You're not going to tear Jesus. But my faith of Jesus Christ goes by what he says. And what he says go by what my faith in Jesus Christ. They're almost one in one. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is a far-fetched idea. But maybe we'll be in heaven with our Bibles that we had. I don't know. But I'll tell you, close to salvation is what the Word said. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There are people who got saved and not by the Word of God, by something other than the Word of God. And it can be a lie. I've watched Christian movies. Oh, we're going we're gonna to attack the Antichrist with computers. That's a lie. I let my light shine for... No, that's a lie. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's the truth. That saved a Philippian jailer who was going to kill himself in the middle of the night when he thought everybody was going to live and that verse is still getting people saved. Still. But you're going to trust in a doctrine that defies the Scripture. 
You know, we're to eat and drink Jesus. The Bible stresses against cannibalism. You're lying. because you. And when you go against the Bible, when you go contrary to what the Bible scriptures say, study show thyself approved unto, unto God, a workman that needs not to, not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. When you wrongly divide, you are lying. And you are leading people astray. Jesus said for children, it would be better for to put a millstone hanging about your neck and and thrown into the deepest sea, then you have offended somebody. Do you realize if I were to, if I were, if I'm teaching this Bible lesson here, and I start lying to you, and you start believing my lies, whoa, not only are you condemned, but I get the greater condemnation because I'm the one doing it. Mm -hmm. And I had a guy ask me the other day, one time, he says, are there different degrees in hell? Yes, I'm not going to hell, I'm saved, but what if, and there are people being deceived and lied to in churches and they're believing it and they're losing rewards. They're losing all they can get because of that liar. And we see from John 8, 44, he's taking the side of the devil. God cannot lie. These did not come boldly to the throne of grace. Have you not had troubles and problems in your life? You walk up to that throne. I'm oh, sorry, I, I didn't really mean it. I'm busy right now. Take a number. No, that's not what the Bible says. And when you got troubles, you got problems, you got situations in your life, you got to trust. I can walk up to God and say, I need help. Jesus, did you not say, cast your burdens upon you? Yes, I said that. But I really didn't mean it. I just made them happy. Made them feel good. No, that's not our God. That's right. Our troubles, our problems in our life relies on what God told us. And when, even when we're having good days, we're having wonderful days, we're just on high, we're sitting in heaven, and that's what God told us. There are many people who have died being Christians with that thought, in any moment now, I'm going to see Jesus. No, sorry. You, you, you know, no, that's not our God. He's not going to say sorry. He's not, sorry means repenting, and we've already read in scriptures, he's not going to repent, he's not going to be sorry, because there's no need for him to repent. He doesn't sin. There's no need to be sorry, because he's not going to lie to us. That's wonderful. Hebrews, chapter 6, 18. Hebrews 6.18. I mean, I have left churches because of lying preachers. Walked out. I haven't walked away from God because he's not going to lie. Hebrews 6.18. That by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before it. It is impossible. He cannot, and it is impossible for God to lie. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. And I can't say that about myself. I'm sorry. Wish I could, but I can't. Wait till we get the glory. Amen. You know, when we get the glory, every thought, every idea we have will not ever have to be checked. Impossible to lie. Revelation 21, 27. Revelation 21, 27. Now, we'll be, as you're turning to this verse, this will be verse that people are not washed in the blood. This verse will be lied about and say, well, Christians who do lie, this verse is for them. It's not. By this point, Christians who have lied have paid the loss at the judgment seat of Christ as wood, hay, or stubble. But for men who are not washed in the blood, and there will show in no wise enter into it holy Jerusalem, Anything that defiles, neither whatsoever work is abomination, no abominations in glory, or maketh a lie, no liars, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If there's two things that, that chapter 21 concludes to the fact that, that it's not going to be in glory, no abomination, and then no liars. We are going to a place where everything is going to be true because God is true. 
We're going to place everything will be honest because God is honest. Wouldn't that be great? And we can lie by the simplest lie. How are you feeling? I feel good. And you don't. You just don't want to tell them, you know, your troubles. You having a good day? Yeah, but no, and you, you weren't. So John chapter 1, verse 15. Get started on this one and close and pick up next scripture references. John, that would be John the writer, John the son of James, the son of Zebedee. Oh wait, no, take that back. I was going to talk about lying. This is John the Baptist. Jesus has come to John the Baptist at his baptism. John, John the Baptist, bear witness of him. John saw Jesus. He touched Jesus when he immersed him in the water and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. All right, this is the testimony of John the Baptist. He's a witness. He is a testimony that I saw Jesus. I've never seen Jesus. I've got to put the faith and trust in the honesty of John and the honesty of the Bible to say, okay, John the Baptist saw Jesus. I never did, but i got to trust that. And he witnessed Jesus. And I spank. So it's a testimony, a verbal testimony. Now it says here, John bear witness of him, Jesus. And cry saying, this was he, Jesus of whom I, John, spank, he, Jesus, that cometh after me, John, is preferred before me, John, for he, Jesus, was before me. Now, we're going to pick up that he was before, we're going to look at next week, we're going to look at the birth of John, we're going to see the fact is that John was born before Jesus, and yet Jesus was before John. And we'll get that all out next time, Lord willing. Lord God, just thank you that you are honest, true. And Lord, that we can't doubt you, but Lord, we do in our hearts. Lord God, we, we lack the faith at times, Lord, and help build me. And Lord God, build us. Lord God, that we'll be faithful witnesses, Lord, true and honest and right before you, as you are before us. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.